Coming to you live from deep within an icy, well, sort of slushy now, radioactive wasteland. We are the lone survivors of the alt-right kick apocalypse. The brave, the bold, the bitchy, once more wading into battle against the... Uh, pick me? Froggy? Pick me, pick me hordes. The pick me hordes. Pick me zombie pick me hordes. With Rant Zerker... I, I, this one isn't numbered, so you, you guys get no number this time. Uh, Rant... Zerker multi tool <laughs> edition. Um, Canadian government versus Gamergate 2. Pick me on Cox if we get to it. Like, we, we might do the pick me on Cox as, a, as an after show. So, uh, oh. yeah, it, we just okay. So, let me give you the backstory on this. It, so, it, it's, it's basically like Bill Burr said, you know, they're like it's like in Braveheart, you know, they come running across the hillside, down the hillside. Skirts up, faint, faint, faces painted, ready to jump on your dick right in front of your wife. Is, is, is that sure? A pick me, pick uh, me on Cox. Yeah, there can be only one. <laughs> <laughs> that's the pick me credo. There can be only one, because cock is in short supply. Oh. Um, no, no, that's just Hannah Cox, you know. So I, I, I originally I said Cox on pick me's, but then I was like, yeah. I think pick me's on Cox is is it's it somehow flows better, you know. It just it, well, it 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 does bring up more amusing imagery. Yeah, it does bring up more amusing. We'll we'll leave it at that. So anyway, let me let me explain what's going on here with the multi tool edition. So I got a Twitter thread that came came across my desk, and by desk I mean Discord, um, in which. This in, uh, this Twitter user named Madam Savvy, so at Madam Savvy on X, gave everybody a heads up about the Canadian government and the Canadian government's new initiative to study violent extremism in video games. So just just a just a brief rundown. We're, we'll discuss this for as long as I, I guess it's it's uh, it's of interest. But the government of Canada is going to give over $300,000 to probably a think tank, which will just be like, I don't know, 24 uh, gender studies graduates who are going to oh. huff their own like vaginal fumes and then write down the results. Uh, uh, so that's called queefs. Yeah, queefs. Well, they're going to huff they their own queefs. Are they queefs when you're actually creating gases due to the chemical reactions there, though, at that point? Well, can they, I don't can know. they be considered it's... vapors? Can they be considered I'm just saying. Just just well, ponder that while I continue. So right. let me let me just uh I'll just read this so you all get an idea. Yesterday, I wrote about Take This Org and their Department of Homeland Security grant. So our friends from the Department of Homeland Security and their very, 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 very important initiatives into examining people like men's rights activists and the greater manosphere because we are a, an imminent threat to America, apparently. In cell adjacent. We're in cell adjacent and an imminent threat to America. Um, now they're going after gamers. Uh, so this is uh, apparently um, she mentions a doctor, Rach 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 Rachelle, Rachel Coert. Now, I don't know who that is, so I'm just going to leave that out. Maybe Brian knows, maybe Karen knows and go to the meat of the matter. Canada announced a funding program on March 13th, 2024 to study violent extremism in video games. So let's unpack today the relationships and connections. So apparently this this grant and the Canadian government is now connected to Sweet Baby Inc. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, oh, the tendrils go. You know what's the whole Sweet Baby thing, right, Karen? No. Uh, Brian, oh. do you want to help her out? Oh, my God. Uh, well, Sweet Baby Inc. is a... Um, narrative consulting firm that works with video game developers to create stories that are more uh, empathetic and inclusive, which is basically another way of saying intersectionally feminist. 
and they get oh yeah okay um, so so basically a d uh, uh a dei injection oh yeah 100 percent Okay. It's a it's a DEI um, a ESG injection uh, ESG injected exactly. thing. Yep, and they and and uh, there's a couple of interesting things about the Sweet Baby Inc. Um, by the way, none of this really surprises me because the government is involved uh, with this whole thing, and there are like you know we had that woman BX on our show, and she you know gave us spill the tea, I guess as the kids would say, about all of the ways in which the Department of Homeland Security and the feds and other government NGOs, not just the United States, but Canada, the UK, etc., are all funding, you know, various, um, uh, like, events and orgs and initiatives, initiatives, yes, but it's all to monitor and spy on gamers, but it's also to sort of try to control the conversations, you know, like the social media spaces. This is like the three hundred thousand dollars. It was also three hundred thousand. No, it was seven hundred thousand. Or it was seven hundred thousand. Oh, yeah, yeah. seven hundred thousand dollars. Not seven hundred thousand. That, that was going to um, like monitor, I don't know, divert traffic on. Yeah, on divert what? traffic. It was like counter influencers. So counter like influencers. Yeah. Yeah, because we're living in the age of the of where the celebrity status doesn't hold any water anymore like nobody watches the oscars nobody cares about movies so the government and people who like to meddle which is basically the government so um, this is just and this is just mk ultra uh, plus operation mockingbird internet edition yeah exactly yeah. it's it's like that and yeah, there yeah, and so sweet, mercury and syphilis yeah sweet okay. baby inc is 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 uh, a Less particular syphilis, note Allison. Well, that doesn't because sound very inclusive. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sweet Baby <laughs> Inc. was of, of particular interest because um, they got caught. And uh, they got caught in insofar as uh, there was a, a couple of, of games that were released that were really disappointing, if not outright awful. And there was this one Steam user named Cabrutus, uh, who I've actually had on the show. If you want to look at the interview, it's over on Honey Badger Arcade. And we also re-uploaded it here. But anyway... But Brutus was on, um, uh, he created a group that was just called Sweet Baby Inc. Detected so that buyers can see, you know, like who is involved with what what titles so that buyers can be informed and be like, okay, I don't want to buy that because they have like, they've basically left a lot of destruction in their wake as a narrative consulting firm, which by the way, they have openly admitting admitted to doing mafia style shakedowns uh, an intimidation of developers and companies you know so if you like it's like um that's a nice a woman game you have there it'd be a shame yeah nice game you have there it'd be a shame if somebody called it sexist and yeah. sent the, well, the be, cancel it'd mob be after you shame if if the uh if the um fcc were to uh or the you oh, know good lord um, you're right governmental organization yeah. were to, or maybe the irs would be would be, be interested would, in your payroll yeah, the DHS might might end up calling you uh, and a hot and it works. And she, the woman who runs it, um, Bel Air, Kim Bel Air, she says, I mean, there there's everybody seen this that's been paying attention. There is a, her speaking at like a conference, so not a secret, not a not a you know not a hot mic moment, just like in front of a crowd of people. She's just saying, look, if you don't get what you want, you have to sit down with these people and terrify them and tell them what will happen to them if they don't do what you want them to do, if they don't give you what you want. And so gamers were like, well, I'm not gonna give this bitch any of my money. And so they basically wanted to put together a list so that they knew who they would spend their money on and who they would not spend their money on. And the mistake, none of this was a problem until some of the employees at Sweet Baby Inc. noticed that they were doing this and they tried to get this guy, Cabrutus, um, you know, they accuse him of racism and sexism and all this shit, even I though the guy lives in point. Brazil. And and as a Brazilian, he's right? like, look, our economy is crap. I can't afford things very much. So whatever I buy, I want to be really like careful about it because it costs so much. And they tried to get his Steam account, uh, account banned, which means he would lose access to every game. And he spent oh, thousands on his games. Bought, yeah. yeah, games that he's already bought. They tried to shut down his group. They tried to shut down his Discord server that he created. So they're coming after him and everyone can see that this is happening. 
while they're accusing him and the people in his community of harassment of and you know intimidation and shit like that. Okay, so, so just uh, just a point of clarification. That's Cabrutus, the sweet baby thing, which Cabrutus, is a small part of a larger puzzle. Cabrutus, did he uh, set up the curated Steam list? Yeah, he did. He created the yeah, Steam okay. list, but okay, but so anyone has a right to create a list. Anybody. Can. Yeah. So what he essentially did was he found all the games that Sweet Baby Inc. had worked on and created a Steam list around them. That was his great crime. That was and his that's great why crime. He, he ended up being targeted, and then the people who are targeting them, him, as they target him, are crying harassment. Of yeah, course. Yeah. Well, because that's, that's what they that's, do. That's just classic Darvo. That's every. That's all they do. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so and, let me continue. That's that's the yeah, story of sweet. Unless you feel like there's something more to be said. Oh uh, no, I mean, I guess yeah. other than like this, what's happening here is what BX An was expansion. talking about with the manosphere. It's not. It's related. I can I can I can tell you why it's related, uh, but I think it's pretty obvious to us. Yeah. 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 Well, well we can we can get into that. Let me finish reading yeah. this though, because I just wanted you to get Karen up to speed, and then yeah. I will at least read the first tweet. Okay. The federal government of Canada has announced more than 300,000 in funding awards to a group to study how gaming communities can potentially create environments conducive to radicalization and violent extremism via gender-based analysis. <laughs> gender-based analysis. So sort of what we do, in a way. The okay. official... Well, but, 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 yeah, no, feminism, but I know. A gender-based analysis, okay? I Sure. You got video games with like uh, Western guys killing Muslims and Muslim guys killing Western guys, right? Uh, I could see them looking into whether maybe that might be radicalizing certain individuals to feel a certain way about certain groups of people. But gender? It's a, it's the tool they always use. It's the one that that every other tool is based on. Let's let's be frank. The, the narrative around misogyny, the narrative around a society at war with women is the weapon that they use to gain access to controlling spaces and government money. Oh. That's what they have. This is this is the on this is I think this is very well established at this point. They oh. may they may finesse with uh, Islamophobia. Uh, oh yeah, no, it's only the Muslim men who are horrible. The Muslim women are just innocent victims of their men. Well, be, the, yeah, it, it, but they'll, they'll, they might they might elaborate on the a initial essential allegation of felony misogyny with additional allegations of transphobia, homophobia, Islamophobia, um, anti-Semitism, uh, anti-Islamophobia. Uh, and all kinds of other and, things. And, you might and, elaborate on it. Although, uh, I, interestingly enough, every man in every group that they supposedly advocate for is himself a white straight man, should the need ar arise. But, but the the central pillar of all this is always women are in danger. Yeah. That's that's the central threat narrative here. Okay, so. The official post from Canada.ca specifically states that they are looking at how misogyny plays a role in extremist ideologies across geography. You know what? I, I don't even think that gamers... Like, they're, they're going after gamers again. And this is a really interesting timing considering the Sweet Baby Inc. thing and then the harassment of Cabrutus and all of that, that. That suddenly this is on their radar. They're going after gamers... Like, I could almost see going after us, you know, like the, the men's rights activists, because we do do a gender-based analysis. Like, it, I, I, I don't no, know. No, that's why they won't. That's why they won't go after. Like They already have, they, really. Yeah, I know they already have, right? But it just because someone on Twitter managed to stumble across this thing, right? I haven't received any harassment about that report that dhs report nobody's mentioned it to me i the only w reason i know of it is because of you uh because it got sent to you and uh, and the woman who compiled the whole thing the th thread on twitter right i wouldn't know it exists i i haven't been threatened i haven't been harassed i haven't been anything 
as far as I know, right? Um, and I don't think they're gonna do anything because if it comes to like any kind of actual thing that blows up in the press or something like that, like a uh, men's rights activist was turned away from the border, you know, uh, mm -hmm. trying to enter the United States, blah, blah, blah. Why, why do I often to... end up being the yeah, one, the, the no, object? Okay, but, of no, yeah, just keep going. But, but that was, that was just so low key. Like it, it didn't even make the news. No, well, it nobody didn't even cares. Make like I didn't local Saskatchewan news. No, no one really gave it crap. Yeah, um, no, I w I would raise a fucking stink if it happened to me after I know about this DHS report. Yes, right? that's true. Okay. Like, yeah, and I would have. I, I would known, raise hell. I would be notifying the media. I would be like, "What the fuck is this? I'm a goddamn housewife. I'm too lazy to be a radical. I can't <laughs> even be arsed to sweep the dog hair off the floor." <laughs> right and there and there's i don't even know if they're spying on me you know it's perfectly legal for the department of homeland security and the cia to spy on foreign nationals yeah they might be but here's the thing um right the and problem... i would raise a stink and everybody would find out about it and then it would bring all kinds of attention to me yeah and then we they probably aren't don't worth want to do money. that we aren't worth any money and video games are worth a lot of money and this guy is uh, is threatening the profits of these video game companies, yes. and like so, he is like he is in a much higher profile kind of industry. The video game industry, well, is he's not he's just The men's gamer. rights industry isn't even an industry; it's a cottage industry, if anything. Yeah, that being as may, and I would also add that going after us. Um, like uh we'd be able brian, to argue back yeah we'd be able to argue back brian always ends the show with men's rights activists are machines that's why in a lot of cases i think they avoid talking to us uh -huh. because we can turn their arguments inside out upside down into the fifth dimension bring it back and slap them in the face with it oh yeah and they know yeah, that no. yeah no like it's so easy to freaking disprove these people mm -hmm. right and then their only response is to to get huffy and block you yeah right because it's, it's just like you can just you can just pick apart every single thing they say it may take a while but right? also i'd like to add that this 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 playbook is the same thing they used against me in the calgary expo fiasco oh yeah uh, they they accused me of harassment yeah. as they as they harassed me and threw me out you yeah. know th this is just as this is this is what they do and I think it was particularly amusing that they said that I was targeting women. Um, yeah, I know. For harassment. You're a woman and they were harassing you and targeting you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, no, uh, it's, it's everything is Darvo, 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 Darvo. Or as yeah. Viva Fry and Robert Barnes say, confession through projection. Yep. Okay, so this is this is from the Government of Canada. This is their announcement. Government of Canada announces funding to study potential for radicalization to violence across gaming platforms. Today, the Honorable Dom Dominic LeBlanc, Minister of Public Safety, no. Democratic Institutions, and Intergovernmental Affairs, announced a federal investment of, or the, oh, of more than uh, 317000 to the Royal United Services Institute for Defense and Security Studies for its partnership with the extremism and gaming research network which seeks to better understand potentially harmful socialization processes on gaming and gaming adjacent platforms <laughs> gaming adjacent this the hell is gaming oh i know what gaming adjacent platforms discord. are discord it's discord youtube basically anywhere where you know twitter anywhere where Twitch. people talk about games is yeah, gaming or, or live stream play yeah playthroughs and stuff like that this yep. project will analyze data from across multiple online platforms to investigate how the formation of communities alongside gameplay has the potential to create environments conducive to radicalization to violent extremism. Through gender-based analysis, this study will examine how identities are formed for both individuals and groups of gamers and understand how misogyny can connect violent extremist ideologies across geography and culture on gaming and gaming adjacent platforms. Good okay, oh, okay, okay. I just want to interject something. Um, I wish I had filmed me and my son back when he was like 15 
uh, I think it was, yeah, he was about 15. Um, it was right around the time when um, Trump was running for president, right? Uh, in uh, 2015, 2016. <clears throat> and uh, he, uh, he and I used to sit and uh, watch, uh, I don't know, Brian, you remember Tabiscus? Tabiscus? Yeah, he was like uh, one of those guys who would play through video games. And sometimes oh. he'd do these really, really, really dumb games. Uh, he had he had a big drama, and he just kind of vanished out of existence. He was kind of up there with Markiplier, and. and oh no, uh, I'm was, sorry. I don't. I don't watch a lot of. Streamers, he was a wannabe so. PewDiePie, but oh, okay. anyway. So, but he he actually had some really. He was very comedic in his playthroughs, and he used to play this game. I forget what it was called. But it had like Santa on a sleigh. On a sleigh, it had um, it had a person riding a bicycle with a little kid in the you know in the back seat of the bicycle. It had you know a farmer and a tractor, and they would have to go through a bunch of sheets of it, consensu consensually uh, consent uh, thicker and thicker sheets of glass, right? Concentrically thicker. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't and know. and blades and like you'd have to you'd have to throw us you'd have to throw swords and and you know try and uh, not get hit by them and stuff like that, and it would just like it was very cartoonish and like limbs would be falling off and your little kid on the back of your bike would get beheaded and and all of this and his, this this guy's reactions were like the game itself was hilarious and there's like blood spurting everywhere and. It was just like gore galore, right? And uh, the guy's reactions and commentary were so hilarious, right? Sam and I, because I have the sense of humor of a 14-year-old boy, um, would just be laughing our asses off. And I wish I had filmed us watching those. And then I could send it to Justin Trudeau. Yeah laughing at people dying in the most horrible ways <laughs> you, can do. you can play a woman yeah but well. you see it's gender-based analysis okay let me continue i'm gonna okay. um i'm gonna skip the part with and, and again you guys uh, uh brian put the link in the low bar so you guys can read it all yourself if you wish uh what is extremism in gaming research network let's unpack EGRN is a research network that aims to uncover how malign actors exploit gaming and inversely, they want to use gaming for good. Started in 2021, they boast more than 60 registered members and include many top global think tanks and institutions. One of their core mission questions reads as such, how can games, gamers and gaming platforms be empowered to combat hate and facilitate building positive, resilient communities? A direct quote from their website front page. We also act as a bridge from gamer communities and small CSOs developing their own games all the way to donor governments and international policymakers at the United Nations through the man mandated UN Office of Counterterrorism, UNOCT, and other mandated UN agencies including, including UNDP and UNITAR. Like, this is unbelievable. We go from oh. this guy who cur curated a a list of games that this that this D DEI initiative worked on to this. I mean, it's it, it, maybe there's no connection, but it seems strangely coincidental. Yeah, no, I it, think there's a connection. It's yeah. um. Well, it's all connected, honey. Yeah, but no, this, I'm... the sheer level of threat response is insane. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. I, I'm just <laughs> we're escalating right to terrorism. And incidentally, during the the uh, trial that I we went through with the Calgary Expo and the Mary Sue, I was accused of being a terrorist. Yeah. Well, there you go. Like this is this the, the playbook never changes. No. <clears throat> no, they're as what predictable is... as the sunrise. And what is it that these? What is it that a that a Steam curated like a, a curation list? What what? How does that? How did we get to terrorism? How? 
Oh, well, fucking troll, it, Allison. I fucking think. Troll. Okay, I think you know, if people listen to young men talking to each other on you know their headphones while they're playing MMO RPGs, right? Um, they they might be a little shocked. I, I was never shocked um, when my son would pretend to be gagging on something and then say, oh, that was some good dick, you know, into his headphones. I'd be like, uh, that's weird, right? But, um, but it's, he's just being a retard, right? That's, that's just him trying to gross his friends out. Just like his little dip routine, um, you know. Uh, he he brought up uh, oh there was a study that says 50% of people stand up to wipe and his friends were like no that, that can't be right and he's like no of course it's right if you don't stand up how how can you dip and and they're like what what's dipping and he says he says you guys don't dip <laughs> I thought everybody dipped and they're like what's dipping and he says it's when you dip the toilet paper in the water before you wipe and they just you can hear them on coming through the headphones just grossing out okay and but this, this is just this is just the fucked up shit that he thinks of i'm pretty sure he's not going to turn into a terrorist yeah this you know what it is it's the idea that men are connecting and communicating outside government overreach outside women's overreach outside women's overreach oh. okay, i didn't say that but or Men's men's spaces have been under scrutiny for as long as there have been men's spaces. No matter what it is, whether it's the lodge or the Boy Scout the camp house. or the fucking bowling alley or the bar. I mean, it, and this is just like the what? One of the final retreats. This is why it's connected, because what's another place that men might go? They might go to forums. They might talk to like go on red pill forums and talk to other men. They might be on incel forums. They might be on Reddit. They might be on 4chan. All of that, all of that comes yeah. under scrutiny. Well, no. And they would spend, they would spend billions if they could control that space. And that I think that this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I've been saying this since Gamergate was going on. Oh, I mean, yeah. this is why I get so frustrated with people in Gamergate that were in Gamergate that were supportive of it that would not listen when I told them the ethics problem is not the problem the problem is the ideology that creates the the the, the excuse reason. for poor ethics it's like well uh, what I'm the, the ends justify the means we got to stop those gamers and by the way as an aside I, I don't like the categorization gamer because it's basically everybody. Like, like everybody plays video games. It's not a niche thing played by weirdos. It's it's very, very common. Like, people are playing on their phone, or they're playing on a console, or on their PC, or whatever. There is the the the, the enter. It's an entertainment medium that has been that has far outpaced any other entertainment entertainment medium in existence. Perhaps with the exception of like you know social media. Perhaps, but I think that social media is still playing catch up. And when they gender it by saying gamers are the problem, they're not saying gamers are the problem because gamers are basically everybody. They're saying men are the problem. They're saying men playing these games without our oversight, having fun, doing what they want without our control are a problem. And the reason, and this is what I really think, this goes back to why men's spaces have been under attack and under scrutiny forever is because the, the biggest threat to the government and to women who can't, like, leave shit alone are men who can think for themselves. And men who can think for themselves are the greatest threat to, to all of this. And the thing about gamers is, well, I don't even want to say that. The thing about the people they're targeting who happen to play video games that are men is that they are sort of, like, more likely to be aware of systems because that's what they... That's what gaming is, right? Yeah. It's like exploiting the systems. It's like, how do I make the most out of this game that I'm playing? How do I get the most enjoyment? How do I, I, you know, uh, do the best at it? How do I, how do I make myself the most competitive? And there, the sweet baby thing was exposed because they could not leave them alone. 
And yeah. now this is where we're at. And now the guy, Cabrutus, is creating a new website. Uh, it's not even Sweet Baby Detected. It's DEI Detected. Yeah. Because he mm. sees that there's a problem at a much greater scale. That's what I'm saying. When I say and, the gamer game was never it. about video games and it was never about journalism. It was we're always about the ideology. His internet host attacked. <laughs> They'll try to break that, bring that down. Yeah, they're going to try and bring him down. And, and the worst part is, you know, I spoke to him and he's just a normal guy. He didn't, know, he didn't think any of this was going on. He didn't know about Gamergate. What? He was just a guy that was like, you know what? I just want to play my video games. And I didn't like all this intersectional feminist crap in this game that I bought. So I thought I would like point it out to other people. He, he lives like in Brazil. You know what happened to Brazil politically? Like ba basically the, 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 their current government essentially stole the election from them. And now they're basically like hunting people down who supported the previous government which was uh bolsonaro's government yeah and so like they're they're going through a bunch of shit and they're very poor like the people are struggling you know mm. worse than we are and so this guy's like look you know i i i, I do what i can time. yeah i just want to have a little bit of escape and then i go yeah. in there and i'm being preached at literally the the problem with the the dei initiatives is because they sacrifice that's their passion Either it's their passion because that's what they're paid to do, or it's their passion because it's their ideological focus, not the artwork and not making a good game. So the DEI will always come at the cost of quality in a game. Yep. Um, and and it also, well, there's a lot of reasons why it's bad, but but um, I think that what's happening with with this is that they're trying to problematize men's interests like they've always done and that's why they're saying could this lead to violence and of yeah. course because we live in a society that's likely to believe it because we have such a low opinion of men then they're just gonna be like oh yeah i could see that oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. well i mean okay so when when was it it certainly wasn't before or during or through books like ender's game right when was it that orson scott cards homophobia became like a controversy right because you couldn't reading those books you would never know you would never know because he didn't inject it into the books and or you know like his he was mormon right or he's mormon and he was just like no i don't i don't okay shut up mom <laughs> okay um, but but you would you would never know it to read his books, right? And then it came exactly. out later that he was a Mormon and he didn't agree with you know maybe he ate too much Chick Fil A and donated to like pro life groups and stuff, right? And he didn't think bakers should be for, forced to bake gay wedding cakes, okay? Some some shit like that, right? And everybody lost their shit. You know how they didn't know before that because he didn't put any of that in his books in his stories he just wrote good stories and they were really good stories well yes that yep. that's another thing though the whole art world i'm sad to say it has been gate kept for over a hundred years and it's been on the basis of ideological purity now of course that purity has changed because what would have been considered you know appropriate um subject matter for art in the uh, end of the 19th century um, and today is completely different. But the point is that gatekeeping was always going on. That's why like Robert Heinlein is like considered a shitty author. It's not because he is a shitty author. It's because the elite snobbish art critique bastards, they just say that he is. And they're gonna yeah, do it to yeah. Tolkien too. You give it a little time, they're already doing it. And C.S. Lewis and, and fucking, you know, uh, Charles Dickens and Mark Twain and Roald Dahl. I mean, they do oh, this yeah. like, and it's never going to end because it yeah, never, it's never it's enough just... because art itself has been subverted and it has been for like a long, long time. And video games it... are just another medium that they're coming after. Yeah, And it's the thing that burns hard. my ass more than anything. If he was going to try and pitch Ender's Game right now, um, he'd be asked, well, do you think you could, uh, 
could you make like a, one of the characters gay and the uh, the commandant of the academy? Um, could you make him like a drag queen? Would that well, look look at what they're doing to J.K. Rowling. She's yeah. a feminist. I mean, like <laughs> she's oh, actually. She, I'm she not. Tried. Uh, she tried though. She tried. And and here's the thing too. Nobody suspected Dumbledore was gay. Nobody would have cared that Dumbledore was gay. After the books were written, she comes out and she says, you know, I always picture, I always envisioned Dumbledore as, as a gay man. And now all I can, I can't get out of my head uh, the phrase big gay Dumbledore's big gay academy, right? Yeah. Okay, I, I can't, right? And it's like, why would you even disclose that? Because you're pandering. And she pandered. And now look where she is. And that's not to say the pandering is what led to this. It's just she opened the door. Well, um, honestly, I I think that even if she had done that, if she hadn't have done that, I think she still would have got slammed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's so, like... Well, it's like she the was... other thing is that just having an idle speculation like that, like maybe it's pandering, maybe she was just having an idle speculation. Because you well, do... Well, no, it's her character, right? Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah. It's not an idle speculation. She knows her character. She just never disclosed it. And maybe yeah. she thought, maybe she thought, ooh, if I if I take Dumbledore out of the closet, right, then maybe it'll help other people come out as gay. And it's like no or something. Well it's and, the most it's the most craven form of, of pandering, if that's what it was. Yeah. Because he, he, she didn't do it in a way that would give her any kind of censure. Like, yeah. Uh, but I wanted to just bring something else up on this. Uh, well, first of all, I should do the things before we get too much further in. All right, guys. So don't forget, we are doing our monthly fundraiser at feedthebadger.com slash support. So please help us out. Um, I might do some arm twisting at some point uh, if we have time. Uh, and also, if you want to send us a message, get those get those th those super chows. Get them in because it's sort of it's a slow day. Uh, I hope you enjoy this this content. Tell us you enjoy this content. Tell us we're not screaming into the void. Uh, tell us that you are following along what we have been seeing, like this 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 pattern that we're we've been talking about for years now, at feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. So you know, give us a give us a heads up that you enjoy this content, that you have something to say about it, and uh, we get the full benefit of whatever funds you send, and you get the full benefit of avoiding sending your comment through YouTube's comment enhancement system. So once again, feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. Send in those send in those comments, folks. Do it. Do it now. Um, and uh, to get back to this, I just want to point out, all right, that me and Brian a few months ago did a show with Justin Trottier. J and Karen knows who Justin Trottier. If you don't know who he is, he is single-handedly brought men's services to Canada. Yeah. Like it, 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 there's, there's no other way to put it. Like he is yeah, single-handedly. No, dude, dude is like uh, hyper energetic. Never. Rest. Yes. Yeah, and he's 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 actually very mentally tough, in my opinion. Oh yeah. Considering what he's managed to accomplish and how much he's fought against, so he has single-handedly brought men's services to Canada. He is single-handedly. Well, not single-handedly, because he also has some vol volunteers and, and employees as well. But if if he was taken he's out led, tomorrow... He's led the charge. Yeah. He's led the charge. If he was taken out tomorrow, men's services in Canada might end up collapsing. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. Now, we had we did an interview with him because we periodically ch touch base with him to find out where he's at. And he has now several services he's established from like um domestic violence shelters for men and their families uh to call in services to even working with the police with at-risk youth and he has proven that there is need in the men's community for these services and he's also pr proven he has a success tra a track record of success with providing these services now he has tried to get funding from the government of canada and he constantly gets blocked yep. by feminist bureaucrats from mm -hmm. getting that funding. So it's all privately funded. So this is men helping other men. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. 
and it's 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 spearheaded by a man who had who has single-handedly fought this dragon for like 10 years and the canadian government will not give a dime to men in need uh -huh. when it comes to domestic violence sexual assault uh the the results of uh deprived upbringings and abuse not a dime will the canadian government give to men in need but you know 300,000 to look at gaming communities and misogyny yep that's like what, what at this point i'm like is look, it, isn't it's that just, just it, it doesn't that is isn't that just like an epic self own you know it, like if you're a government and you say well misogyny is rampant everywhere and uh, and we're gonna we're gonna spend as much money as possible to fix it um it, because men are bad and they don't want to help anyone even though most of the mps that are signing on to this shit are men are men and half the voters who are voting for it are men and uh but uh, fuck those guys over there whose moms beat them when they were growing up and then they got addicted to drugs and dropped out of school and now they're homeless. Fuck those guys. And also, fuck the men being beaten by their wives. That doesn't happen, don't you know? And, uh, but... And fuck the this, boys the, being raped. The, the very fact that there are people out there saying that women sometimes be, abuse their kids and women sometimes abuse their husbands and women sometimes do bad things to men and not all men are bad well that's misogyny yeah gotta stamp that down and, it's, like, and, and this is it's this is this is the opposite this is where i'm at it's like we we and this is i mean the, the only difference between the states and canada is that there's no justin trotty as far as i can tell in the states well i mean there's harry crouch yeah uh Yes, but somebody who's putting together like a on the ground, um, like he sure. he does the the yeah services. So it's more like a a, a legal thing with with the yeah, NCFM. He, well, he yeah he provides uh, legal assistance. Legal assistance, like yeah, but, which is really important. Yeah. But I mean, I'm and I don't mean to downplay it, but I'm saying like not of the same kind, which is like uh, somebody spearheading getting domestic violence shelters and all that other stuff. The same problem exists in the U.S. As yeah. does in Canada, there is a complete indifference, if not hostility, to male victims. Oh. And I'm like looking at this, and it's people call out the red pill bros, right? And they say, "Oh, they're horrible people," but they are trying to live in a world where governments would rather fund trying to find misogyny, a misogynist needle in a haystack, than men who are suffering domestic violence and boys and men suffering domestic violence and sexual assault like we live in that world that is so callous to men in need so dismissive and they have <coughs> to exist in a world that is utterly callous to any kind of breath of potential need in these men and they have to overcome it and develop a mentality to deal with it and then we turn around and we say that they are misogynist. And it's like, okay, I want, I would love to do this as an experiment. Let's have a society that has the least care and consideration. I mean, maybe, maybe they don't d give the same services for men as they do women, but at the very least, they don't blame men when they get into these situations where they realistically have no out. Right? I mean, Often they have to build their own out, but society will just heap on more condemnation, more blame, more obstacles to try to crush them. And maybe maybe we could instead be in a society that recognizes it's not fair for women to hit men. It's not fair for women to rape men and boys. You know, that's not a good thing. If we lived in that society and men were still, you know, as misogynistic as the red pill bros you might have a point, but that's not the society we live in. We live in a society that does not care about men the moment they have a need. Like, yeah. the moment they have a need, they're like, yeah, your shelter is the trash bin, friend. Go get in it and stop fucking bugging us. Yeah. That's the attitude. Well, how, how do you expect men to turn around and take that attitude that is directed to them 
and come back with a warm and loving attitude towards women and generosity and stuff. and generosity and the irony is they still do many yeah. of them still do come because... back with a warm loving generous and forgiving attitude towards women and in response they get condemnation blame and obstacles in oh you you seem to be struggling under the weight well let's put more weight on you yeah kind of shit and this is exactly this encapsulates it exactly the canadian government 300,000 to investigate misogyny in gaming communities zip for men in need male domestic violence shelters call in lines intervention programs for at risk youth you know sexual assault Support groups, zip for that. Like this is, I I understand why a man would be livid and pissed at this. And I'm actually surprised by the red pill gamers, or the, the sorry, not the red pill gamers, the red pillars, because at least they are still willing to work with the system. They're still trying to make it work. That's the yeah. great irony. And then they, and not only do they have to deal with, oh yeah, if I have the least amount of need, I'm going to be kicked to the curb as a man. Because it's right here in black and white, folks. You can't get away from it. The Canadian government, 300,000 to make sure men care about women's feelings. Zip! For men who are dealing with women's fists. Right, right there, black and white. You tell me. Now they have to deal with that, and then they have to go on Twitter and TikTok and listen to the loudest female voices constantly maligning, condemning, treating them with contempt, calling them losers if they don't earn enough, all of this shit, right? So they have to deal with the idea that women, it's, women just don't love men, right? Men are expendable. Society will treat them as expendable. God forbid we go in a war and then we'll all have a wake-up call like we did in Ukraine about uh -huh. what men are actually worth. Right? You know, Ukrainian men, yeah, you have to go die for the national sovereignty of Ukraine. Ukrainian women, uh, go go have some fun on German tic t uh, Tinder. You know, like, yeah, this yeah. is sickening. Yeah. And oh, and, and hey, hey, Ukrainian women, don't forget to ask, Six six six, and here's because the thing: only six inches, six feet, and six figures will do. And here's the thing, right? All of this, pre all of this situation, men in need, they get kicked to the curb, and then they look at women, and it now it looks like women aren't there's they just don't love men, and, and it's not even possible for a man to earn their love. That's the image that they're projecting. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you one thing. That's what men want. They want women's love. Full stop. Period. Even if they, even a lot of them, you think that it's sex. No, that's what we tell ourselves. To make ourselves feel better when we send them to the barricades. No. Men want women's love. And in this society, there is no indication that men can get it. At all. We can do anything to get women's love. And again, going back to all of this, red pillars are trying to deal with this shit. And I'm afraid when I understand the context, there's very little that red pillars can actually say to make me think that they're horrible people. Because um, I'm afraid that I'm firmly in the camp that society is horrible to men. And when women get behind a camera, they seem to just want to do it more. Am I wrong? Like. How many TikToks are like, yeah, men are w gratitude for men for doing the things that women don't want to do to keep society running? Let's be honest. Or just even even if you have to have a man who earns a certain amount, maybe don't call the ones who don't losers. Yeah. Like, like I, I, I especially can't... when you got DEI basically uh, giving you a boost in terms of your job opportunities and career opportunities right yeah like that's the real kicker too right because women get a leg up right for no reason for no good reason um they get a leg up and uh 
and then they're like, well, I won't be with a man who earns less than me. Well, you've priced yourself out of the fucking market, bitch. And you know why? Um, I, and I said this in our original discussion of the sweet baby stuff. The why men's issues were the first thing in the chasm. The first thing they threw into the chasm. The reason why men's issues were the first thing they threw into the chasm is because they are the direct counter of it, evidence that society is structured around the law, the lines of the misogynist. Yeah, that yeah, women yeah. are no, constantly it's... under threat from men. Therefore, wherever men gather, they, we, the government has every right to get in there and fuck with it. Which, yeah. incidentally, is why all of these uh, these Antifa and communists, they are so full of shit. Because they facilitate. Uh, as soon as you embrace this narrative, all you have to say, well, well, men who are a part of a union are the white cis straight het of, of unions. And then you justify union busting. Yeah. Like you just have to be like, oh, but unions are hotbeds of misogyny and sexism. Well, gotta go. Get those stormtroopers marching through to break it up. Like, you don't see this? This is a weapon that's used indiscriminately to get rid of everything that doesn't support the people in power. Yeah. Okay, I, that's a long rant, so I will... I will shush. I will shush so other people can talk. Oh, or, no, no, no. I, I, I don't have anything particular to add. Um, but, uh... Yeah, so the only... Like, ultimately, this is gonna keep happening. As long as this weapon exists, it will be used. As long as this weapon exists, it's almost there's almost a compulsion to use it. And people get distracted by intersectionality and they get distracted by all the other isms that they bring up, which is exactly why they bring them up. So you're distracted from the main weapon. It's like they're the smoke screen. So you're constantly farting the, fighting the fart of like trans issues. So you don't see the big Bertha coming to bear of misogyny. Oh, do you, do you do you remember do you remember the big thing when they like uh, the all the feminists were like oh oh no 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 we don't believe in patriarchy anymore no society is a kiriarchy remember that yep. like, yeah yeah that was the that was the first that was, that was uh, forgotten pretty quickly <laughs> that was yeah that was um how they sort of tried to reinvent intersectionality. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they w when they introduced intersectionality, and I was like, okay, so basically, you took a bowl of lettuce, okay, and you called it salad, okay, and then you added some pumpkin seeds and a few mandarin orange wedges and and a little bit of chicken on top, and now you're saying it's not salad anymore. No, it's well, still it fucking salad. Yeah, well, not just that, but, like, they lost, like, if you call it kiriarchy, which is basically just rule by rulers, which is a tautology, which meaning, they, 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 they abandoned it, because it doesn't have the power of patriarchy. Yeah, no, it doesn't have the power, the, the, the big word, the big baddie, the big boogeyman, the big scary beast, is the misogyny monster, okay? And that's what it is, and the moment that they let it go... Right. And that's why there's this this big battle, right? This big civil war in feminism <coughs> between one group of people who call themselves women and another group of people who call themselves women. Right. And uh, and it's like uh, you got this this big group in the middle of women who are like, I don't know who to side with because like they're both calling themselves women. Right? That's why J.K. Rowling's on the outs. It was never about... She never got, like, freaking... Uh, uh, Slammed for her mis and, misandry. And, and pla practically cancelled over Big Gay Dumbledore's Big Gay Academy. She, she And the, the potential implications of that, you know, when you're talking about minor attracted persons in charge of a school full of... A boarding school full of children. Okay, so... Never got into any real trouble with that. Uh, in fact, the only trouble she got into in the circles that I was in at the time 
was that like why would you even say that like why wouldn't you have just made him gay in the book why wouldn't you have made him obviously gay in the book mm -hmm. we're mad that you didn't ob make him obviously gay in the book right that was why she got into trouble over that and she was like well it's a kid's book and so it's like okay and now if it was today and she was writing that book she probably would have made him gay because hey she'd have had an editor saying hey i i bet you dumbledore you could do something with him do some a little bit um a little bit edgy with him you know and make him gay or, or maybe a cross dresser a, 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 a um uh, a, a drag queen hmm? Hmm? That, wouldn't that be interesting right but okay that's what she why she got into trouble over that right as far as as far as now all she says is you know like okay live your best life have sex with whoever will have sex with you right like do call yourself whatever you want it's fine by me right um that doesn't necessarily make you a woman it and it, it like and it it doesn't entitle you to enter into certain women's spaces that exist for a reason right and that would be locker rooms and and uh changing rooms and bathrooms and things like that right and while i am fairly laissez-faire about those those kinds of issues the whole thing with this is <clears throat> we're now basically now that we've decided that it, it's just a a momentary declaration it's how you feel in the moment do you feel like a woman today you were a man yesterday but are you a woman today how about this minute how about right now okay that just opens the door for people who are not genuinely trans to gain access to women in vulnerable situations right and i'm sorry but that's not okay i don't think it's oh. necessarily yeah no i i, I just don't wait, wait no I... no i just i just realized um i just realized the connection uh between the name drop at the beginning uh dr rachel coart oh and uh sweet baby inc and then the canadian all right so the uh extremism and gaming research network mm -hmm. has uh, some listed partners so they are um nordic safe cities strong cities international Give me a link Center. allison drop a link i'll share it with the oh okay uh no it should be just scrolled down on the the twitter link that you oh, have it's already the, it's in this tweet thread yeah, oh you're talking about this yeah i'm talking about the, I'm, I'm talking about the topic what no, a I, 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 what a shock you know, some so. listed partners here we go yeah some listed partners um to the extreme and engage extremism and gaming research network which is um which is i believe who is receiving is no they're in partnership Tech with against the, terrorism they're in partnership with the royal international services international center for counterterrorism Okay, so they're in partnership with the Royal United Services Institute, Institute for Defense and Security Studies. How are these freaking institutes for defense, like, dealing with this crap? I know. Like, don't they have more important things to deal with? Like but, the men, border of the United States. Men oh. playing video games and minding their own business is the most important issue. The world, okay, all right. So I anyway, mean, they're, the, uh, the... And you know what, you know what's really laughable is that whose money are they spending on this? men's whose money the extremism whose money is in, this well taxpayer money okay and who pays all, most of the all, taxes we all know no it's it's not men pay most of the taxes only men pay taxes right extremism. so men are paying into a system that is essentially tracking monitoring and trying to control them yeah yep Extremism and Gaming Network Research Network is in partnership with the Royal United Services Institute for Defense and Security Studies, which is, I believe, a Canadian. So the connection is that the listed partners of the Extremism and Gaming Research Institute includes, or, or their, if you go to their membership page, filed under individual members, the fifth one listed is Dr. Rachel Cowart. 
Coward. Um, and this individual is the one who authored the blog post from Take This Org denouncing Gamergate 2 and linking to a Kotaku article defending SBI. Now, here's the thing. Like, when the whole Amber Heard and uh, Charlie... I know this is a bit of a segue, but when the whole Amber Heard and Johnny Depp thing happened, um, I did come... I was doing an um, analysis of the media response, and I came across, in, in like, a little corner, uh, a particularly telling comment from one uh ruth glenn from i believe the national domestic uh, a national organization against or national against domestic violence something or other national coalition against domestic violence and she said that the the amber heard versus johnny depp case had not was not a good case and she, the reason why she cited was because it didn't give them money essentially that they hadn't got donations and i was like well that's an that's an odd thing to say because this i was still in my innocent phase what can i <laughs> i was like what wait 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 what does that mean and then so i go and i'm like well i'm gonna take a look at your financials here my dear and well she's older than me so i shouldn't say my dear but and i looked at them and i'm like okay th am i seeing this right Qu three quarters of a million salary and all you do is give referrals to plastic surgeons for women who have uh disfiguring injuries as a result of domestic battery which i can't imagine is a huge amount of work um so that's all you do is you just give referrals to plastic surgeons you you have a pamphlet and a mailing list and you do a seminar once a month a, a hour and a half seminar once a month for three quarters of a million salary and so i See, looked and, at I, and i thought i thought the 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 um administrators of the women's shelters in Alberta made a lot of money. They were only making like 250, maybe three. Well, no, they, the, the, the salary was split up. Like she got a, a good amount as a CEO, but the salary ended up being split up among board members. Um, as far as I can tell, uh, reading a little bit through the line between the lines. So the salary, uh, is like maybe a couple dozen board members and each one mm. had to have been receiving about 40,000. But the thing is, they were receiving it for like ten hours yeah. of work a year. Yeah, yeah. You know, like maybe, maybe like ten fifty, yeah, uh, maybe fifty hours of work a year, at most. Yeah. And then I, I was like, what the hell is going on? So I, what I ended up doing is I ended up looking at some of the board members, and they kept showing up on other boards. Yeah. You know where you know you you, you have a hundred uh, a million dollars in salary. You got a certain amount of board members. They're all getting kickbacks. I'm like, is this a situation where they end up on the boards of like ten, like a dozen of these, and then yes. by that time you're making like a cool half a million? Oh yeah, a year. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, this is all fucking pork. That's what this is. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm seeing here too. She's she's gonna start to you're gonna start to see her on the boards of multiple or advisory positions of multiple of these organizations, that's because she's going to be picking up kickbacks from each one. Uh -huh. and, and the the only positive about all of this is these organizations don't do anything. All they do is divert money into these people's coffers, and that's it. That's probably why you, you don't feel like you're targeted at all, Karen, is because they don't fucking do anything. They're just taking money to do nothing. So at the very least... There's that, except, yeah. you know, I mean, in this case, they're targeting Cabrutus to be have his stuff taken down off the web. So that's that's not a good thing. So keep an eye on that. But for the most part, well, they don't do anything. Yeah, I mean, they're they're stealing from him if they do that. I and mean, they're already stealing yes. from everybody else and they're engaging in mafia tactics to get their yes. way. And it's yeah, all no, to no, satisfy not... their narcissism. I'm not saying that they're incapable. Uh, okay, let me put it this Stop way. Doing harm. It's just they're, it's they're not doing anything of worth. They they are definitely capable of doing harm in the service of protecting their racket. And the funny thing is is if if we ever, you know, if tomorrow women woke up and said, "You know what? I just don't believe that men oppress women. I just don't believe it, Sam I am." All of this shit would disappear. It would disappear because there would be not there wouldn't be the emotional pressure behind it. There wouldn't be this constant drumbeat of protecting women from men that drives all of the justification for 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 targeting people like Cabrutus. Like they 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 it's not just 
that I don't I shouldn't say it's not just they are targeting him because they are framing him and everybody who's trying to protect them now as harassers of women and nobody stops and thinks or or, or once you do that everybody outside of the know is going to think that everything they do is justified yeah you get what i'm saying oh yes yeah. it, it's like it, it is the it is the thing that turns people's brains off that's why the kkk used it against black men <laughs> like well, nobody even even fellow black people would probably think twice before they defended a rapist oh no uh oh god who was it ages ago told me that the kkk used to put out pamphlets um telling everybody uh that or telling black men basically warning black men that if you beat your black wife we're coming for you mm. yeah like even they were like kind of the it, KKK. It, really, it really is the bigotry the same bigotry that we have you know about arab muslims and and uh you know they oppress their own women and we should go and bomb the middle east to save those women from their yes. evil men everything could be justified with this and in fact the kkk started explicitly or or rather yeah i think it was the kkk if you read gone with the wind and i assume that she doesn't have any reason to lie it was explicitly started to protect uh women's virtue yeah and like that is a motive like it's a tremendously powerful motive what was helen of troy what was the motive behind that right what was the motive behind the sabine women to protect women's virtue you know to protect men women from from men's sexual encroachment and this is the same yeah. thing it's the same thing and the way that they turn people's minds off is they saturate everyone in this this idea that men everywhere are a danger to women, a constant danger to women. So if we don't constantly slam down and, and investigate and watch what men are doing at every second of the day, then women could be harmed. And yeah, that, no, it, it really is like that son of threat narrative, the ugly yeah. tropes video that you put out. Yeah. I mean, that was spot on, absolutely spot on the, uh, the whole you know the only trope uglier than those men over there harm their their uh no no those men are, will, no, no, will no, no. harm our, our women. women yeah the only th trope uglier is those men over there harm their own women oh and speaking of that there is one other thing like they are targeting men but and this is something that occurred to me when i was in a, in a discord that isn't my discord like isn't the discord that we run and it, it's a discord of a YouTuber that's that's sort of on the up and up. And originally there, there was a, you know, there's a there's a female section. And I go into it, and I don't know if you, you experience this, Karen, maybe you do. But when you go into female groups, there's mm -hmm. always a underlying sense of fear, if that makes sense. That you are going to insult someone or you're going to upset someone and then the group is going to turn you against you and throw you out. I don't know if you've had that experience. Like you're walking on eggshells. Um well, yeah, okay. It, I I have had the experience that I'm expected to do that. Um and and I have been kicked out of some places okay. moderated by and for women. Um, but uh, I, I don't do it. Like I don't yeah, feel I know. any. Fear no, I, I, I get it. I get it. I like maybe I'm, I'm more of a nervous person than you, so maybe I have that sense. So I'm like, I'm like in this space, and I'm like, this is awful. Yeah, no, this it's is not a pleasant. Fucking place awful. To be. It's, yeah, it's no, not... that's why I recommend just go in there and start smashing shit, and then like uh, get kicked out. Well, this is this is what happened. Something to think about. This is what happened. Okay, so uh, apparently there are some women who are less nervy like they have like everything is a nerve to them and there was one who just commented about how she works in a male dominated um industry and bad jokes are par par for the course 
in that male dominated industry. And then another woman swans in and is like, you shouldn't tolerate that. You should, you should make them treat you with respect. And um, she's like, I, you don't get anywhere by being a crybaby in this industry, blah, blah, blah. Um, she's like playing a bit defensive. And I said to her, this person, so that's her choice. You know, it's her choice whether or not she does that. And the, the woman was like, well, it's, you know, I, well, I don't have to care about your opinion. And I'm like, well, that's your choice. Yeah. You know, uh, like, and that's what I did. Then a whole bunch of them left. And actually the atmosphere is a lot less unpleasant, shall we say. Yeah. But, but, um, but the, the, the whole, my overall point is that without that little bit of masculinity, yeah. women's spaces are horrifying. Oh Yeah. Like they're they're fucking horrifying. Without that kind of like the maybe maybe it sometimes comes as like the old grandma or the older wise woman who's like yeah you knock it off little bitches, but yeah. you know it's just like you just need a little bit of a damper on it. Otherwise well, it you, just becomes a nightmare. And I was thinking it hasn't been poisoned with estrogen. Yeah, and I was just thinking like this obsession with getting into every fucking space and making it like this actually ruins the space for a lot of women too Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of women who don't like you got it like i know that the ones who are super dominant and psychotic or sociopathic women love this shit because they can navigate it and they can destroy people and they can and, and 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 it makes them excited but for women who just want to chill and enjoy their lives it's not exciting no no it's 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 just it's just really it's unpleasant yeah with a, a community where you're constantly policing for people's emotions is unpleasant and it's not very productive cooperative and it doesn't build anything right so sometimes there's a i'm pretty sure there's a lot of women who know exactly what i'm talking about and they just would rather be chilling out in a community that doesn't do that and it just came to my mind when i when i entered this community the other thing that occurred to me is when this woman swanned in and demanded this other woman abide by feminism, I realized feminism itself is used as a weapon of compliance towards women mm-hmm. to take away other women's autonomy. It's like that whole exchange. Well, that's her choice. I say, that's her choice. And then she said, well, I don't have to care about your choice. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's your choice. Autonomy. Allow yeah. people the right to choose. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have necessarily the right to demand compliance and feminism gives these women who can't leave well enough alone the right to demand compliance from other women oh. and it's like that's is this is this the thing is this what we do now no like I, I don't see how that is that is beneficial to women especially if you're a woman who you know wants a break from walking on edge cells and wants to be able to own her own mind and choices okay anyway that's my little spiel because i think that I think it's underestimated how much this shit also targets women. And well, you know, women when, who don't comply. Yeah, and when you when you actually smoke out the the you create an atmosphere that isn't walking on eggshells, you smoke out the female sociopaths. They True. leave. True. Okay. All right, but I think we've like what do you think, Brian? Do you have anything to add because I think we've sort of exhausted this? Um, uh, no, except, uh, I try well, to give I know. I know updates mem- throughout the week on what? Honey Badger Arcade related specifically to Gamergate 2, because mm. I don't think it's going away, and I hope that, uh, you know, if there's any way that people can help out Cabrutus, he wants to set up a website, DEI Detected, where people can essentially share, uh, you know, like if they, if you work on a company that has DEI or whatever, and you want to share information with him he wants people to be, to be able to do that i think that uh dei is basically just the next evolution of cancel culture which is the next evolution of the me too movement um i think it's just like using you know um this t- it's carrying this stuff into the uh legislative uh process and hiring and human resources and all that and this is terrible this is terrible for business it's not a free market. It's not capitalism. Um, it's just like it's going to destroy us. So it has to be stopped. And the gamers 
you know, they, they, fortunately, they're spurgy enough to do something about it. So hopefully they will follow follow through. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, you know, like what I don't understand is why they're still doing this. Like Mark Cuban got into a big uh, fight on the site formerly known as Twitter um, not long ago about how he used uh, gender and, and race uh as sort of a deciding factor in his hiring practices. Like, I use diversity as, you know, the thing that would put one candidate, you know, help me decide between two equal candidates, right? That's illegal. That's illegal. And he finally stopped arguing, dropped, dropped the argument, stopped arguing for it, because I think now he thinks he's going to get sued. Right. This is shit. This shit is actually like it, in Canada. It's perfectly legal. You can literally the government can freaking put up a job posting that says white men need not apply. Right. OK. But in the U.S. and in particular, since um, the recent SCOTUS ruling striking down affirmative action in schools. Right. Like it's against the law to discriminate by race or by sex against any candidate for any position right with very few exceptions okay you're you're casting a movie and you need a mr and mrs smith right and mrs smith is going to be a woman and mr smith is going to be a man okay and and you have that right to you know or uh, black people you know you're gonna you're gonna cast cuba gooding jr as that first black military scuba diver or whatever it was right okay um but you 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 can't do that in normal everyday positions anymore right you can't get away with that and so the fact that they're still trying to inject this shit into HR departments is insane. They're courting lawsuits. All right. All right. Except in Canada, where we're totally fucking backwards. We're just trying to make sure you're, you're done. You done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, we're done like dinner. All right. I want oh, to read the super. I, yeah, I got some super chows. And I should read. Yep. So Richard Bier sent a super chow and says, uh, running a bit behind, but I wonder if the Canadian government will be giving men priority access to maid or will that be discriminatory as well? Well. Oh, you want to hear something ironic? Uh-huh. Okay. An 88 year old man in Canada was just convicted of manslaughter or of, he just pled guilty of manslaughter. Now, he'd been convicted of murdering his wife back in 2000. Uh, his wife was murdered in, or died in 2009, and he was convicted, and he served nine years. And then he got a second trial based on the forensic evidence, right? And he had always maintained that she killed herself, right? And, uh, and then so he got his new trial, and he pled guilty of manslaughter on the grounds that he provided her with the gun, okay? Because... Uh, she was suicidal. He knew it. He provided her with the gun. And then he was sentenced to only one day, additional day in prison. And um, you, I have to wonder. I have to wonder. Is it because of time served? Right? Because he'd already served almost nine years. Or is it because now the government would hand that woman the gun and... Uh, Oh, well, maybe a bottle of pills, right? It's easier to clean up. And uh, and they do it... Uh, like, sure. They just offer it. They just offer it. Good Lord. Yeah. Yeah, no. Very interesting. Interesting times we're living in. Yeah, this is morality now. Mm -hmm. Giving uh, kids hard drugs and everybody gets to kill themselves if they want. But, you know, and also uh, we can't fund men's shelters. That's a no-go, but we can't give a thin dime to, to men in need, but we can certainly 
give a whole bunch of pork to people who say we'll find we'll find the is the misogyny in the room right we'll find it we'll find it uh -huh. okay so before we continue i think there's a couple more yeah, i got a couple more super chows i'd like but to get I, to before, yeah but before let we me just do that. let me just blow through these and then you guys can continue. well i was just gonna give you a give you an idea of what we could do we could do a little bit of hannah cox yeah. Um, a little bit, like just 30 seconds maybe. And then, okay. and then we can respond to it and then we can, we'll all go into the patron only show. So if you want to join us, it's feedthebadger.com slash subscribe. And we will continue on and, and finish off cocks. Oh right. God. So many cocks. I'm so, so much cocks. Of... All right. All right. All right. All right. Cocks, Allison. <laughs> <sighs> All right, let's go. All right, are you ready? Super yeah. Chow. Richard Beer again for $5. Says, what exactly does the sexual orientation of Dumbledore have to do with the story at all? Nothing. Well, yeah, nothing. It's almost like that was just put in there so that people would be like, OMG, so progressive. And now, well, basically, J.K. Rowling got what she deserved. So well, there you go. Well, no, she didn't put it in the book. No, but she went out and said it afterwards because I she know. thought it would like get her a little bit more props. It was it was virtue signaling. It was empty. Yeah. And yeah. and of course her fans only got mad at her because she didn't put it in the book so that they couldn't point to it and say, "Look, it's officially canon now." So, but it doesn't matter because she's a turf. Well, what I'm my my point is this. Yeah. Virtue signaling is not virtue. And it will get you will get bit in the ass by a bunch of other people who also are just shallow, empty, fucking people who can only see themselves in a the mirror. They're pathetic. The whole thing is pathetic, and I don't want anything to do with it. Um, yeah. Richard Bier gives us five dollars again and says, "Would that same KKK pursue white men if the white men were to beat their wives, white yes. wives enough?" But yeah, because yeah. um, well, a good chunk of lynchings were of white men. Yeah. But the one thing they'd have in common is that they're all men. Yeah, the society of the Old South was incredibly chivalrous, like unbelievably. Like they would, uh, they would, they would. And in fact, if if uh, Gone with the Wind is to be believed, and again, I don't think it's necessarily. I mean, she based it on first-person accounts. Yes, they were also murdering white men who were raping yeah. women too. Yeah, like they would. There was. Uh, it was just that would. It was supposedly, as we mentioned. The, the the overall cry was to protect women. Well, which... you know, I I watch I watch a, a show called a uh, YouTube channel called Black Conservative Perspective. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, seen but... I've seen a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, uh, there's um, a uh, bill somewhere to make. Uh... Oh, Trump! Trump has basically said that uh, human trafficking should qualify for the death penalty and uh and i was just like and he and bcp was totally for it he was like yeah no i could see that i'd be behind that and i'm just like no oh god no no no, Ugh, no. no. right you know why there was this story related to me it was through ncfm uh national coalition for men um some people who were involved with them right there was a dude just like a decent guy who lived in Chicago and there were these two hookers who got on the bad side of their drug dealer they owed him a bunch of money and he was coming after them right and this dude was he was about to drive out to like Annapolis or something like that to visit family and he was like ah, oh, you want to ride to Baltimore I'll get you out of town and they're like yeah that'd be great so then he drops them off at a hotel in Baltimore and then uh, he goes, visits his family for a couple of weeks, heads back to Chicago, and then like a month later, the feds knock on his door, right? And arrest him. And uh, apparently these two women were turning tricks out of their hotel room, got caught, and when they were being interrogated by the cops, right? And they're, you know, they look at their, uh, their IDs and they're like, you live in Chicago, how did you get here? And they're like, oh, this guy drove us. And, uh, and they're like, really? He drove you? Like, did he bring you here against your will? And that was enough of a clue. Right? For them to say, yes, he did. He absolutely did. And, uh, and then they got no charges, right? And this guy got arrested for 
trafficking. Never help a woman you don't know. <laughs> Never. Ever. Don't be a fucking moron. It doesn't matter what is happening. As I've heard so many stories now over, over and over and over again. Oh, I saw this woman. He was, she was beating her by, being beaten by her boyfriend. And then I intervened. But what happened is she held me down while he stabbed me. Because that's yep. what happens. Yep. Do not intervene. Yep. Because she started you started attacking not... me and hitting me with sticks. Yeah. Because you do not know the character of the woman involved. Yeah. And you are probably a decent guy, right? You want to intervene. You want to protect women. That's, that's decent. But the problem is... When women are in these situations, it's very rarely that they just happen to be an innocent flower that was grabbed by a, I, I don't know, a cougar down the street. No, it's because of their choices. All right, so don't don't get involved. Call the cops. Still stay well enough, well away. And uh, if you if you want to do something, call the cops. That's it. Don't get involved because it, it 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 never goes well. And I, I mean, I've heard so many stories about. And well, that's it, it, the, I wouldn't say it never goes well, but it rarely goes well. It rarely goes well. I've heard so many stories about men dying in that situation. And oh, she tried often, to intervene. Often with the help of the damsel they were trying yes. to rescue. Yes. Okay, so just this. There's a reason why cops hate domestics. Oh yeah. Um. All right. So. A super chow. I'm trying to get chow? through these, Allison. I'm trying to get through them. Okay. Um, Richard Beer gives us five bucks and says, you have to remember that women of this kind of mindset actually find this mindset attractive and empowering for some reason. Perhaps it is an extension of that forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, actually. Oh, what? Perhaps it is, is it, it is an extension of what the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden actually is slash was. Okay, so women basically find the mentality that men are out to get them that men like one tweet which was the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard men are the women have to mate with their only natural predator i'm like bitch please no <laughs> if men weren't around there'd be natural predators everywhere Ugh. bears lions tigers you know like alligators they'd be everywhere everywhere all around women yeah, because right? women would be living in the fucking wilderness, in grass huts or yurts, right? With with absolutely no defenses against natural predators. Yeah, Jesus Christ, these women need to go to Africa, spend six months there. Just uh, not not in the cities, out in the freaking country. They'll never do that. They'll never have a wake-up call about what reality actually is. And you don't even need to talk about predators. I mean, I live in a in a town where every year winter tries to kill us. Oh yeah, no. And every Minus year, forty or lower. Every or just like try to you know keep to completely um, bog us down in snow, basically. And every year, men are out there removing the snow and making sure everything functions. Yep. Right. You know, like making sure the water keeps running in zero degree weather, making sure the electricity is on, minus making sure the 40 degree weather. Yeah. Minus 40, making sure the natural gas stays on, you know, just live in a, in a, a part of the world where the weather itself could kill you and you will get a wake up call. And, and don't live in the cities where you can go in underground freaking bunkers and or underground tunnels or Subway above ground. Tunnels or yeah. Whatever, no, yeah, no, no. Just live in a place where when you go out, you can hear the wind rolling in off the prairie. When you know? your nose hairs freeze, when <laughs> when when you you go outside after they warned you, right, that exposed skin can freeze. You really under understand in under a minute. You really understand what utilities mean in that situation. Yeah, you understand how valuable your eyeballs are and vulnerable. Yeah, and, and how important keeping utilities up is. Mm -hmm. Like, bear, like, and that's why I can't, I get, I, I get into these arguments with these women who do not recognize that men's 
men's work is if it doesn't happen people the society won't happen period die people the people will die left and right i mean like they'll go out camping on the may long weekend right they'll go out to like jasper or something and and they'll camp in a in a fifth wheel right or an rv they call that camping at a at a site where they have like on-site showers and toilets right yeah and they think that's roughing it okay let's get to uh let's get to one particularly delusional individual brian cue up the hannah cox do like 30 seconds of it brian are you there have we lost brian have you lost me no i haven't lost you i don't know where brian is maybe he got sick of hearing us talk yeah maybe hey brian are you there wow typical man jesus yeah i'm here i'm just i'm just waiting i'm waiting on y'all all All right okay okay another super chat well i think i read them all so do you want to watch some of this video yes let's watch only a little bit only all right small amount all Pick right. Me, um, this is Pick Me so, Girl Psychology Explained. So she's This is the Pick Me explained. Girl Psychology Explained video by by Hannah Cox that we started. Uh, and at this point, she was using fictional movies like Gone Girl and uh, the Barbie movie to make points about Pick Me Girls because she is oh. an intellectual. That's what they do. So this is her finishing off like the rant that is essentially the money shot of the Barbie film. Um, and then her, her well, her thoughts on that. So I'm going to go ahead and play it now. Woman, tie herself into knots so that people will like us. And if all of that is also true There's for a doll, just representing women, then I don't even know. So while I can't stand pick me behavior, and I think it is demeaning towards other women, I have to have a little compassion here. I think the best thing we can do with people who have this attitude not really is not bully the them. But- not really feeling the compassion, lady. More like the contempt. But also, and, once again, like she begins this this whole thing with a woman who's complaining about women uh, doing things that she then complains about women doing things. So it's like, it, it feels like pick me is never really super defined because she could be considered one. Well, okay, but you know, like the, okay, you have to never get old. I'm sorry. But we do. That's not true. Right. That, that it's it's not just that you can never get old. Right. Or that there's a way that you won't ever get old. That that's like out of the question. There's no expectation that a woman never gets old. Right. Women get old all the time. Their husbands still love them. Right. Their children still appreciate them. And uh, and their dogs are still just as affectionate yeah well the problem is that you don't get all of the beanies you get when you were young and that feels like some sort of coercive thing like you don't well yeah yeah no you don't don't... that you've complained about for the entire time until you no longer get it this this brings me to jessica valenti and her her articles uh you know about uh, i think they were two years apart or something one of them was uh you know why we have to end catcalling it's so bad for women and you know it's it's uh, disrespectful and and it makes women feel afraid and uncomfortable and all of that right and then two years later she's like why i miss catcalling and it's because she got old and fat and men stopped catcalling her and now she doesn't feel beautiful or desirable yeah you can you and, can get and- old you just have to deal with well, and you are going to like get a man, get a man before you get old, before you get too old, right? And be nice to nice enough to him, right? Have realistic expectations in that regard first, and then be nice enough to him, right? That you can keep him, and then you don't have to worry about getting old. Yep. All right. Let's uh, let's do a little bit more, and then we're done. Actually, you know what? Maybe we should stop it here. What do you think, Brian? Just get to uh, get gone. Uh, have you died, Brian? 
No, I'm here. Am I playing more of this? Uh, you know what? Let's go into the after show. Uh, okay. I have to open this board again, don't I? Oh go my god. Well, you do All right. Now and I'll do the. I got. I got a couple. I got a super chat and a super chat. Then you can take us out if you would. Yes. I just want to remind right. everybody we'll be doing the rest of this in the after show at feedthebadger.com slash subscribe. So do that and come join us. All right, keep going, Brian. All right. Uh, Betty Adams gives us $5 and says, when it comes to not men's rights, but men's value, would you see that? Would you say that Mike Rowe and Dirty Jobs has been one of the greatest advocates for men's value in the modern media landscape? Well, I would say yes. I like Mike Rowe quite a bit. And, um... Uh, you know, he's he may not be like in this particular circle, but his approach to talking about what men bring to the world. Dirty Jobs was actually really good for shining a light on that, on that, on those jobs that no one knows men are, you know, constantly doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah, I would agree. So I would agree with that. I is it strange that when you said he's not in this space, I was like, good for him. Like it's well, I mean, I'm just saying that, but, but uh, I don't know, like, I think that he would be sympathetic. I, I don't think that he would oppose us, but I'm just saying that No. I'm at least saying... from a perspective of recognizing, recognizing that the necessary work that gives people the infrastructure to allow them to have the free time to complain about men existing <laughs> is something that micro does a good job of bringing to light or bringing us to to see oh so, yeah yeah so yes all yes okay so get the super all right chat. thank you for that um betty adams and then i got one super chat from xeranx for five bucks and i hope i didn't miss any super chats or rumble rants i'll look again right after this and he says brian's immune system is rejecting the playing of the hannah cox video he had to extreme he had to use extreme will to respond and push play you're abusing the doge <laughs> uh, thank you for that oh god why am i laughing no i mean I, I don't know uh let me just make sure i didn't miss anything here sometimes rumbles super chows don't come through or rumble rants don't come through but no we're good okay okay all right so that's it so, this once again we are doing our monthly fundraiser at feedthebadger.com slash subscribe please help us out because we don't exist unless you do and if you want to send us a message after the show is over we will respond to it at the next reasonable equivalent of this show and you can do so at feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. Send us a message so we know we're not screaming into the void. We know there's others out there. You can touch us. Phone home. <laughs> touch us. I mean, like in a like in a an innocent ET way, not like a less innocent Biden way. Uh anyway, feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. And uh yeah, back to you, Brian. Okay, well, if you guys like this video, please hit like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, hit the bell for notifications, leave us a comment, let us know what you guys think about what we discussed on the show today, and what do you think about the connection between, um, well, Gamergate 2 and all of these government initiatives, um, and yeah, let us know what you guys think about that in the comments as well. Thank you so much for coming on today's episode of The Rant Zerker. You'll find links to the sources in the description. And, a and we will talk to you all. Huh? And a link to subscribe too, right? Did I say that? I didn't say that? Yeah, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. But, but a our... link to subscribe to the Discord to join us in the patron show. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. That's in yeah, there too. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. in the low bar. Sorry. So hopefully we'll see yeah. you all there. Thank you so much for coming on today's episode of Rant Zerker. And we'll talk to you all in the next one. Are machines, dude. Okay, they are literal machines. They are talking point machines. They are impossible to fucking deal with, especially if you have like, especially if you have like a, a couple dudes who have good memory on top of that too. Holy shit, you're fucked.